In this video, I'm going to show you how to make pretty good looking photorealistic strawberries in Blender. I wanted to do this because I wanted to study how to create complex surfaces and materials without using Photoscan objects, and I wasn't satisfied with the existing strawberry techniques, as they don't look very realistic or limit the fruit to just triangular shaped berries. This technique works on any shape. I wanted to create a video on this because while the techniques aren't new, there isn't really a video showing how everything works together. So hopefully this will give you ideas on your own projects, beyond just strawberries. Fair warning, it's a bit tricky and finicky, but it can produce some pretty stunning results. You could even use it to make anything a strawberry. Anything. In this video, I'm just covering the berry part and not the leaves. We'll leave that to another video. Strawberries are covered with seeds, which are embedded in little divots on the surface. And these divots are the problem. One problem creating a strawberry material using only normal maps is that you will almost always end up with a seam. The second, more major problem is that you will usually get pinching near the poles, and this kills the realism. This gives us a hint that we need to create a surface texture based on the geometry of the specific object after we've distributed seeds across the surface. So the way I'm going to show you here is to use geometry nodes to cover an object with divot template objects to cast contact shadows on our berry. Then bake an ambient occlusion map, which we can then use as a displacement map to create the seed divots. We then use geometry nodes to distribute seed objects using the same node tree to get the final result. There are several ways to do this, but I'm going to show you using geometry nodes. While the results are good and it's easier to practice the concepts, the performance isn't great. The idea here is to generate an ideal high poly model for which you can then apply further different techniques to reduce the polygon count, if required. We'll start by creating the strawberry base object. While it might be tempting to use a sphere, the problem with the sphere is that the geometry itself pinches at the poles, which creates unwanted artifacts. Instead, we're going to start with a cube. Let's start with one around 1.5 to 2 inches. Add a couple loop cuts to create the basic outline of the strawberry. Now, we want to add a subdivision modifier. However, if we rotate it, we'll notice that the object looks squarish as we add more subdivisions. We need to add a lot of mesh to play with, so I've added 6 here. We need to add some vertical loop cuts and manually transform the object to look less squarish. Pull the edges inwards to make a circle. Just continue to adjust until you get a shape you like. Strawberries are never perfect hearts, and any additional bumps just adds to the realism. Of course, strawberries come in all shapes and sizes, and this is not a problem if you're not creating a heart-shaped fruit. It doesn't have to look perfect here, we're just getting the overall shape and getting rid of the squareness. Now, we want to add even more random bumps and curves to the object. We can do this in many ways. We can manually tweak vertices, add a displacement modifier using a texture-based displacement, or, in this case, I'll use a lattice modifier and distort it that way. After you're done, don't forget to UV unwrap the object if you haven't already. Now on to making our seeds. To create the AO map, we need to create an object that will cast a shadow onto our strawberry. This is basically an oval-shaped object. Start with a 4mm cube. Shrink the X and Y axis to about 1mm, squeeze the bottom in and flare the top out. Add a subsurface modifier at level 3 and apply smooth shading. Add a couple loop cuts to make the top and bottom slightly pointed. This shape isn't round but flat, so squeeze it in slightly. Apply rotation scale once you're done. You don't need to be exact but any shape like this will work. Place this object into a collection. We want to create a few seed objects. These are just simple objects with a little hair sticking out the bottom. They are usually a dirty yellow color, with the little hair being brown. Create a few variations of shapes and colors, especially if you're making close-up renders. In this example, I created five of them, all with slight color and surface displacement variations. Put these into a collection. Seeds come in different shapes and sizes, but you do want to take note of the size relationship between the seeds and template objects. The seeds are smaller than the holes that they were placed in. Now we're going to be using geometry nodes to populate the object with seeds. First, start with a Distribute Points on Faces node. Choose Poisson Disk and enter the distance and density. Create an Instance on Points node and Collection Info. Select Seed Template for now and choose Separate and Reset Children. Check the Pick Instance box. Join everything together with a Join Geometry. We actually want to make the collection as an input to our graph as we'll be switching between our seed templates and seed objects. When we populate the object with seeds, Notice that they're not rotating around the object properly. To fix this, create a Rotate Euler node, connect the rotation from the Distribute Point on Faces node, and set the X rotation until they appear to be moving outwards from the object, which is negative 90 degrees in my case. 
Next, we want to control how far up the strawberry to distribute our seeds. So we'll use a bounding box node and get a min point on our mesh and then use it plus an offset to control how far up we want to distribute seeds. Create a separate XYZ node to obtain only the Z value of the min point and then an add math node. Make one of the values an input to our graph and call it seed level. To do the actual comparison, first create a geometry proximity node. Connect the points of the distribute on faces node to the target. Create another separate XYZ node to get only the Z value and then a less than comparison between it and the max seed level specified by the input. This value is 1 if the seed position is less than our input and 0 otherwise. Connect it to the selection input on our instance on points node. Back on our mesh, if we create a geometry node modifier and select our graph, we can see as we change values of our seed level, it limits how far up the fruit the seeds are distributed. Our template objects cannot be right up against the surface of the berry. There needs to be a space between the berry and the objects to get the right ambient occlusion map. The way I did this was to scale the berry down slightly by using a transform node. We want to control how much scaling is used, so I make it an input. The value needs to be slightly smaller than original. In this case, back on the modifier, I used 0.99. We need to be able to control the seed objects, so we'll create a scale instance node and a random value node for the scale value. Make the max and min values as inputs. In this example, I used 0.4 as both the max and min since we're currently making templates for the divots, and I don't need any size variations for them. Seeds on a real strawberry have slight variations in their positions. To do this, create two random value nodes and a combined XYZ node. We want to randomly rotate the Y and Z values slightly, but not X. Now, since our divots don't need this random rotation, we'll multiply this vector with a value, which we'll call random rotation, and make it a boolean. This allows to control if we want random rotations or not as an input. Create a rotate instance node and plug the result of the math node into the rotation input. Now, as we change the random rotation input value to 1, we can see the random rotation effect. Turn it off for the seed templates, but we'll be using it later. Our final result may need manual XYZ translations of the seeds depending on the object. So create a translate instance node and make the translation an input to our graph. We'll use it to do any final adjustments if needed. And that's it. We're done with the geometry node setup. Now we can use the same nodes with different inputs to distribute actual seeds in the exact location of the divots once the divots are generated. Now let's set up our object for generating the ambient occlusion map. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to remove the lattice modifier and any other modifiers causing displacements so we can exactly see the effects of only the displacement map we're creating. Create the geometry node modifier and I'm going to choose the seed template object as our collection. Set the scale to 0.98. Set the seed min and max to about 0.49. This is specific for my example. You have to adjust it till you get the desired divot size in relation to your strawberry object. I don't want any random rotation, so make sure it's zero. And set the divots to no translations. We adjust the seed level until we get the right height, and choose a seed until we get a good looking distribution. To create the ambient occlusion map, first make sure there's a material assigned to the berry, and make sure this material only has the principled BSDF shader and nothing else. Create an image texture node and a new image. Name the AL map and keep it selected. Now in render properties, make sure cycles is selected. Set the samples to 1024. Under bake, select the type to be ambient occlusion and press bake. It will create the AL map and save the image to the selected image texture in the shader. If it's successful on the image, you should see seeds generated across your object according to how you UV unwrap the object. If you want to see how it looks on your object, apply it as a color map and take a look. You should see something like this. In my blog, I'll talk about some of the troubleshooting tips if you don't get this result. Blender doesn't automatically save external file changes, so be sure to save the AO image file. While we baked an AO map, we are actually going to use it as a displacement map, so create a displace modifier. Choose texture and select the AO map we just generated. Now, change the coordinates to UV and select the UV map. Change the strength until you get something more subtle. I used 0.001. This is what we get, nice seed displacements around our strawberry object. Now to add our seeds, create another geometry node modifier and make sure to put it before the displacement modifier. And deactivate the geometry node setup used to generate our AO map. Change the collection to use our real seed collection. Keep the seed and level values the same. 
we have to change the scale to make the seeds flush against the surface of the object and change the min and max till you get a seed size you like. I had to do some very small manual translation upwards to get the seeds appearing on the top half of the divots. In this situation, I set the random rotation to 1 so I get some slight variations of the seed orientations. And there we have it, we populate our strawberry with seeds. If you change any of the input values for the geometry nodes used to make the divots or make any change to a displacement modifier used prior in the stack, you'll have to regenerate the AO map. Here, I've re-enabled the lattice modifier and regenerated AO map. To add more realism, I used the particle system to add hair on the fruit. The colors and sizes vary from fruit to fruit, so you can make them as hairy as you want. The shader node setup is made up of two base textures, which I created using Substance Designer. It contains the small level details, bumps, veins, and colors of the ripe red portion of the berry in the unripened section at the top. Here I already imported them into Blender, added a bit of subsurf scattering, and adjusted the color map to work with my scene. I've included a link where you can download these materials in the description box below. We need to reinforce the contact shadows the seeds create when they sit in the divots. While subtle, it really gives a look that the seeds are in fact laying in these holes. To do this, we use the AO map we generated for the strawberry as a factor when we combine it with a dark red color to our existing color map. This gives us the appearance of nice contact shadows. To bring in the white portion of the berry, create another image texture and use it as a factor to blend in the red and white portions together. To create the mask, I used texture paint and painted the portion of the strawberry I want white. As a final touch, I found that adjusting the translucency of the object also helps creating a fleshy look. And that's it. It's a bit tricky and requires some tweaks to get it right, but it can also produce some pretty nice results. Once you get the concepts, if you're concerned about the high number of polygons, I've described a way we can reduce the number of subdivisions and some of the performance issues caused by geometry nodes on my blog. Have a read if you want to try it out. Keep in mind this isn't the end state. Now that we have a high poly model, we might want to reduce the polygon count further, but that's for another video. And there you have it, pretty good looking non photo scan strawberries. It takes some practice, but I think it looks pretty good, and I really like how it works on berries of all shapes and sizes. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.